Today we're going to learn about volume. We will discover how to solve for the volume of a three-dimensional object. In review, in fifth grade we discovered that the formula for the volume of a rectangular prism is length times width times height. And while that is still true in the case, as we've been telling you, once you get to middle school, they start throwing new things in there. So in sixth grade, we will learn the following formula. Volume equals area of the base times height. They essentially, as you'll discover, will mean the same thing. It's just the way they're going to be writing and the way you'll be seeing it from now on. On your star card, it does have both on there. But next year, they'll be dropping off the length and the width and the height, and it'll just be the capital BH. So B, the capital B, stands for area of base. And the capital letter does matter. So please note that when we write the formula, it's a capital V, a capital B, and a lowercase h. You're going to start learning the language of how to do all this mathematical shortcut. But that capital B represents the area of the base. So here are your formulas. The volume of a rectangular prism, V equals area of base times height. Volume equals length times width times height. Remember, if there's no symbol between there, it means multiplication. And here we have volume of the cube. So it's volume equals sides cubed, or sides to the power of 3. So we're just going to do a little bit of review before we get into the shape. Here we have a rectangular prism, and so that is our shape name. And so here's our rectangular prism. And now we need to worry about the vertexes. Vertexes are the corners. And we can use a dot to represent it like this. So if I count this up, I have eight corners. Now we're going to do the edges, and the edges are the line segments, and so sometimes it's helpful to kind of tick them off, um, mark them with a tick mark as you count them like this. So there's four, but I have to remember I go around also. And so I end up with 12 line segments. Now we have the faces. The faces are the flat surfaces that create the prism. And so I think I will use orange. Those get a little tricky because it's those sides. And so you have to realize they go all around. And so it gets kind of messy. You, you get better at visualizing this, but we are in it going to have six faces. Now the base is one of the faces, but it's what gives the shape its name. And so when you have a rectangular prism versus a triangular prism versus all those different names, it is the base that tells you what type of it is. And so the base is usually what it sits on. And I say usually because sometimes there's exceptions to the rules. Um, so it would be there. I could sit it either way. It would be those top layers there. And so here we have two bases, and that is what tells the shape its name. And so in this case, it's sitting on a rectangle, and that's how we get it to be a rectangular prism. All right. Um, so here we're going to sketch the shape of the base with its dimensions. And basically that means we're going to draw a rectangle. And our rectangle, is because that's what it's sitting on, is 12 by 7. And I get those measurements from right there. And this is on the previous page, so uh, on my screen, so hopefully yours is all filled out. So what we need to do is figure out how many cubes will fit in the bottom layer. So we know that the area of a rectangle is length times width, or the area is equal to base times height. And so we have 7 times 12, and that will equal 84. This is also known as the area of base which again we show with the capital B. So what is the height over here? Well, I just need to go to my chart 
and need a look. My height is two centimeters, so I'll put that in here. Oh, you know, I didn't put the unit over here. That would be centimeters, and since it's an area of a flat surface, it would be squared. So how many identical layers of stacked cubes can be stacked on the solid? So these are centimeter cubes that we're talking about because our unit is centimeter. So we're talking about centimeter cubes if they were all being stacked like that. I'm not going to be able to draw it too terribly well. How many layers? Well, it's two centimeters, and if they're centimeter cubes, we would be able to do two layers because that is our height. So the total volume of my cube is I take my base measurement, 84, area of the base, and I multiply it times my height, which is 2, and I get 100 and 68, and this is where it changes, it's centimeters cube or cubic centimeters. That is what we say because we really, if you go back up to my picture here where I'm trying to draw the cubes, that's really what we're filling up that space with is little bitty tiny centimeter cubes. And so we keep going through and how much we can go and fill in. It's kind of like a fun version of Legos. So here we have a shape. And as you can tell by the measurements of this shape, hmm, if it's four and it's four and it's four, this is a rectangular prism that's a square prism that is really called a cube. So it kind of has some special names to it, but it's so special we give it a special name, a cube. Now we need to mark the vertex. And if you remember, the vertex is denoted by a dot at the corners. So I have eight vertex. Now we're going to do the edges, and the edges are those line segments that come together, and we use a tick mark to note it. So you also have to remember that if they don't do like a see-through shape like this one, you have to know there's that back corner there, and that does take a little bit of skill to do. So we have 12 edges. So now our faces. Our faces are those flat sides that make up together. So you have one on the bottom, you have one on the top, and you have the four that go around on this. So that makes six faces. And our base is what it sits on. And in this case, no matter which way I spin it, it will always have a square on top and bottom. So we'll just say that we have two bases because what we really want to get into now is the formula. This guy right here, volume equals sides cubed, or to the power of three. And so if you remember, the exponent is a direction. It tells you how many times the base number is multiplied. And so there's another term, another way that we're using base. So what that means is we have four times four times four. So I'm going to do order of operations, just work left to right. Four times four is 16 times four. And then I'm going to solve that problem, which would be 64, and my units is inches cubed, or cubic inches. So there we go. Now, if we were to apply the um, volume equals base times height to this formula, it would still be the same. The area of my base would be 4 times 4, which is 16, and then I multiply that times my height, which again would give me 64. So this formula right there is a shortcut. So if it confuses you, you can use the normal formula for this. It will get you the same result if you do your multiplication correctly. It's just a simpler way of writing it. So here we have my favorite type of problem. It's to find the missing measurement. They give us the length is 
five meters, the width is unknown, and the height is two meters, and the total volume is 50 meters cubed. So what you do with that is originally you're going to write your original formula. So since this one uses length and width and height, I can use this formula. Volume equals length, width, and height. So let's go and label. So here's my length. This length would be that line right there. And that would be five meters. My height is two meters. And it would be this measurement right there. That would be two meters. And what we're looking for is our width, which is this one. There we go. That is our question mark. So that is what we're trying to find. So let's just start plugging in our numbers. And here, let's go ahead and give volume a number color. Let's give volume rainbow. No, it didn't rainbow. Hmm. Go figure. Well, we'll just use black. So I'm just going to substitute in just straight down. My volume is 50 meters cubed. My length is 5 meters. And I'm going to multiply that times my width, which is unknown. So I'm just going to put width. And I'm going to multiply that times my height, which is two meters. So let's look at that. What we're trying to find right there is the width. So in order of operations, I can just work across. I can go five times W, and I don't know it, so I'm gonna skip it. So five times two is 10. So I have 10 W on this side, because I don't know what W stands for. And I had 50 on this side. So now I have to get the width by itself, so I'm going to divide by 10, because anything divided by itself is 1. So I'm going to do that to both sides. So once I divide 50 by 10, some of you have already done this in your head, I'm going to have 5. So 5 is what my width is equal to. So I can come fill that in my blank. So they love to do missing parts to you because it just kind of scrambles your brain a little bit. But one of the things I want you to realize is this measurement right here is your big B base of area. So whether you're using this formula or the other one, you're essentially doing the same thing. It's just a new notation that you're going to have to learn. So what I want you to do is to work on your classwork. I believe there's only four problems. Show it to a teacher. Let's get any points of confusion done before you go into your homework. You rock, people.